She may not speak, but her fighting style speaks for itself. Here's a look at the brand new McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, the gold label collection, Batgirl, Cassandra Kane. Cassandra Kane debuted during the No Man's Land saga. She stalked earthquake-shattered Gotham City like a solitary silent ghost, enforcing Batman's laws, the fourth Batgirl. Upon officially joining the Batman family, her training was in reading, writing, and social interaction, not combat. When she learned the world's greatest killer, Lady Shiva Woozen, was her mother, Cassandra briefly led the League of Assassins before being legally adopted by Bruce Wayne. Cassandra Kane has had herself quite the life, born from the greatest assassin, adopted by the greatest detective. And just before we get a closer look at the new Batgirl, Cassandra Kane, let me send a big thank you, if I can, to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that kindly provide the sample that we can have a look at. Cassandra Kane's Batgirl stands at about six and three quarters of an inch in height, or the figure 17 centimeters tall. What's interesting about Cassandra Kane's Batgirl is that she's actually using the top half of the body from the Batgirl that we got from the three Jokers line. And yet, though, she's actually using the lower half of the body from the Batgirl that comes from the build of Batmobile line. Remember that line that we got from the earlier days of DC Multiverse? Funny, though, that the figures are also using somewhat similar lower legs, but she's also using as well the back heel spurs on this Batgirl. She's also using as well the same accessories. It's not all hand-me-downs, though. The figure does at least come include with a trading card that's unique to her. Feature on the front of the card, of course, is Cassandra Kane's swing through the rooftops of Gotham City. And equally unique to her is the paragraph read on the back describing the character. Now, you could read this for yourself. I'm not going to stop you if you really want to. It also happens to be the same thing I read at the beginning of the review, so I sort of beat you to it. No, no. No need to thank me. It's the least I could do. Let's move it off to the side. The figure as well, territory we've covered countless times at the DC printed logo stand with one neighboring peg off to the side. You only get one of them. You only get one that can plug into either one of Kane's boots. Move that also off to the side. Back to as well things that we've covered off before. Maybe not recently, but we did get ourselves a Batarang like this. I'm just going to bring in the Batarang that came included with the one from the Batgirl with the build of Batmobile. The colors, though, aren't quite the same gold. I mean, obviously, looking at the two, they're identical to one another. I mean, you kind of know which one goes with which figure, as this one matches closer to the coloring of her utility belt. They are identical. They are still quite thick. Quite thick. It does fit into either one of her hands. Uh, not that there's a specific dedicated hand. Although, if you look at this side, she does actually kind of have a finger sticking out that suits, I think, a little bit better holding the grapple line. The grapple line, unfortunately, has already misfired. It's propelled out the rope. And this actually, again, is the same one that we did get from the, that back girl, that exact same back girl. Both that one came included with the grapple line and also came included with the same Batarang. It gets just carried over again with the Cassandra Kane release. Uh, the colors, though, are a little bit better. You can see, like, the rope, for example, is a little bit shinier. The silvers are also a little bit nicer handled. Other than that, though, speaking of the handles, again, you can take this because, again, she has the benefit of gripping hands on both sides. See how this one hand, by the way, does have a finger that's sticking out that's kind of just telling you, well, maybe you should put the grapple gun on this side. I mean, again, I don't want to push you in the direction of saying that you have to do it on that side, but, you know, again, just following suit with just the finger. And, of course, you can then take yourself the Batarang, and as big as it may be, it does fit somewhat okay into her hands. I do wish kind of in a way that they could make these batarangs just a little bit smaller. I mean, especially for female figures, I just think that weapons like this to be weld, wield, welded, wielded, I just think that they're a little bit too big. But you can see, there, that's what she looks like with both the grapple line and the batarang in her hands. Let's go ahead and remove these right now. We're going to probably come back to those, I'm sure, when we get to the end of this review. Just put those off to the side. And getting a closer look now at Cassandra Kane's Batgirl. Again, sort of a modge podge, a Frankenstein monster version of two characters that have now come together. I mean, both of them were still clearly Batgirls. I mean, if you were looking at the two, while the head sculpts are clearly different between the two, same top torso being used. So, of course, it has the same emblem. They've just nicely outlined it here differently, done in gold, whereas the original one would have been all stunt done in yellow. The utility belt, though, down below is very different between the two. So we have to then vacate this Batgirl and we have to then bring back in the Batgirl from the build of Batmobile. And you can see that while the top of the torso isn't quite the same, the lower half of the body, especially utility belt, is in fact identical. Something that's also as well, if you look at the back of the boots, the back of the boots also have those little spurs on the backs of their feet. This, the Batgirl from the three Jokers, 
while having similar tops of her boots, didn't actually have the spurs on the backs of her feet. So there were a little bit of tooling done. And again, they were just literally used the lower half of the body from this original Batgirl, complete with the spurs down below there as well. Couldn't help but, of course, point out the very obvious points of this Batgirl is not only the fact that she does have the stitched up face. You don't see a mouth this time around, nor do you see eyes. It's a really interesting idea behind this Batgirl. Unfortunately, she didn't have the longevity of, say, Barbara Gordon, but Cassandra Kane's Batgirl was really interesting at the time that she did appear in the comics. At one point, there was also a Mattel multiverse. I think it was a DC superheroes Batgirl. It was one of my favorites. I don't still, unfortunately, have that figure. Really wish that I still did. The other thing that's also very different about this figure not only is the face, but also as well that now this one is sporting a real fabric cape. It's a departure, obviously, from earlier Batgirls, and really most of the figures tend to have plastic capes. So if you do kind of like the consistency, I'm kind of a bit of a collector myself that prefers the kind of consistent of having all the characters kind of look the same. If they're all kind of starting with plastic capes, I kind of like to continue the trend of having plastic capes. But I got to say, like, the fabric looks really good, and I think it's been nicely done. It's a wire frame, so unfortunately, like, on the back, it's pretty clean, and it does give you a pretty wide stance, a pretty wide... I don't know, separation, wide fanning. That's what the word I was looking for, wide fanning. Unfortunately, though, while it looks very really clean on the back, on the inside, you can very much clearly see this, the part that they've stitched in the, the, the wire frame. The wire frame sticks pretty far out as well. So it doesn't look the cleanest when you see the inside of the cape. I mean, if only be a way that they could have actually flipped it around, but then you'd only only really see the seaming of the line or the seaming where they put the, the wire frame. You'd only see it on the back instead. I mean, overlooking just that one problem, the cape actually flows really nicely. And because the wire frame seems to be a really thick frame too, it means that you can really get some good bends in these, depending on exactly how you want to have the figure displayed. Material is good. I mean, if you were to look at the material, on the back, it's kind of more of a smoother finish. On the inside, on the front, it actually has a little bit more of a texturing. I don't know if the camera's actually able to pick that up or not. But yeah, the body is going to be exactly the same. The colors are really nice. I mean, for what little colors we obviously get. There's a bit of a departure when you see like the colors at the top of the torso are much more of a shinier black than the lower half of Cassandra's body, where it kind of goes more the, the route of more of a, like a matte black plastic. The gold looks really good. Unfortunately, though, like if you were to say, look at the utility belt, and then you go back to the source material, utility belt isn't quite matching 100%. Not that really either one of the Batgirls would have, I mean, if they had to pull the molds from either of those Batgirls, not that the original one would have been any good either, because the original Batgirl, just bringing her back in right now, would have had tiny little capsules, tiny little capsules. You need this meat somewhere in the middle. The pockets work okay, but then they should have maybe used a more, again, like just a rectangular sort of belt buckle on the front instead of the larger bat symbol that she has carried over from that other Batgirl. Other than that, though, I mean, the colors are really nicely done. The paint is pretty good. There's a few little areas where the gold bleeds onto the back of her behind. Other than that, though, I mean, there's not really a lot of opportunities here where there's paint problems. I mean, the paint around the insignia, for example, is... Again, well painted, but it really is just the symbol and it's just the utility belt is the only parts really on the figure that are actually painted. Unless they went back and painted the torso. I don't think that's the case though. For the figure's articulation though, I'm going to go back to once again her head sculpt. Did I feel the chance to did I give you guys the chance enough to show you guys what the head sculpt looks like? I really like the little outlining of the ears they've done on the side. The stitching on the front of the face kind of reminds me of the Batman Returns a Catwoman. I don't know if maybe they got some influence from that. Really nice looking head sculpt. I mean, yes, they probably could have added a little bit of paint. I mean, again, just to bring back in the card here, for example. I mean, Cassandra Kane's costume was all black anyways. Maybe they probably could have added just a little bit of blue. But I know that's so close. And then all of a sudden you start to ruin the figure. And then you think, man, man they sh probably should have pulled back a little bit on the paint. Probably just leaving it to black was probably the better idea. Because the, the natural light would just shine on air those, on those areas of the, the sculpting anyways. I don't think necessarily ne they had to go really in there and start to paint anything on it. Again, going to the figure's articulation, the head sculpt's going to be on a ball joint, so it does rotate all the way around. It looks up pretty good, actually, and it looks down a lot better, in fact, and actually you can also move it back and forth as well. Arms like the other Batgirls easily come out beyond the point of 90 degrees. She also has a little socket joint there on the inside. It's actually more just there to conceal the joint. But the arms do move in and out just a little bit. She has a swivel at the bicep. Bring those arms down. Has a swivel in the bicep. The figure does also have a double hinge on the elbow, and the hands rotate all the way around. Upper torso is going to be on a ball joint. The lower torso is also on a ball joint. Legs split out on a ratcheted joint. You can take the legs and move them forward. Yeah, you can move them back as well. And sure, why not? You can swivel at the top of the thigh as well. 
Double hinge on the knee. Nice tight joints, by the way, on everything that's on Cassandra. I was worried that maybe like with the molds being used the times that they have already, that maybe like joints would be a little bit more on the looser side, but like, no, bi biceps are good. Elbows are good. Thighs seem okay. And knees are all, again, also nice, super tight. Again, she also has the articulation down below here for the ankles. You can rock them back and forth. And finally, Cassandra Kane, if you would believe it, believe it, obviously, we're kind of getting toe articulation with most of these figures. She does also have the little toe bend there as well. Nice looking figure. You know, again, I'm not sure really where I sit when it comes to cloth capes. The cloth cape does make the figure look nicer. But again, if you want one, if you're a collector like myself that really kind of likes the consistency of having plastic capes for all the figures, and again, bring in the other back girls here. You know, again, like to have plastic, plastic, and then all of a sudden in the middle, you've got yourself a departure with the fabric cape. It looks a little different. It looks a little different, but it does make for a nice looking figure. Even though, again, like she's using the top half here, she's using the lower half here, and then she's also using as well the accessories for the build a Batmobile Batgirl. I still like the fact that we finally did get ourselves a Cassandra Kane Batgirl. Going back to even again, like reading the earlier comics with Cassandra Kane, I might even still have a couple of those comics in my collection. And also as well, like the original DC Superheroes Mattel release of Cassandra Kane Batgirl. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. I had it 1.1 sealed. I sold it. I don't know why. And I can't even say either for stupid money either. I just probably sold it for what it was asking for. I probably should have just held on to that Cassandra Kane. If I did, had I still had that figure... I would have then been able to bring her in and you guys could, would have been able to see the difference. But I do like this one. I mean, you know, again, like the colors of Gen are just very muted in black. I mean, very little in the, the way of paint had to be re really required. She's a Frankenstein mod podge of having essentially two back girls uh, taking those two molds and kind of making one figure out of it and then giving her a cloth cape. The end result is actually a good looking Cassandra Kane if you get the chance to grab one for yourself. Seizing an opportunity when it presents itself, and hey, because we can never really do this with a DC Multiverse figure anyways, I've got Cassandra Kane displayed with the fanned out fabric cape. Looks really good. It will unfortunately disrupt some of your regular shelf space figures because most of the figures that we've gotten from DC Multiverse figures, all the DC Multiverse figures tend to usually have plastic capes. That now comes along here, Cassandra Kane, you're going to be putting her on the shelf. She is going to look a little out of place. And maybe that's a good thing too. I don't know if I would say necessarily they need to switch completely over to the idea of fabric capes. Plastic capes always mold really nicely on the back of the figures. And again, because we have so many already of DC Multiverse with plastic capes, no sense to change up the format for, format now. But maybe what they could always do is maybe keep it on a character-to-character -character basis. What may work really well for Cassandra Kane may not just work for just some random Superman. If you're wanting to put fabric capes on a Superman, they can always do that with the DC Superpowers line. But maybe, yeah, again, keeping it only to certain characters and maybe also as well relegate it only to the gold label collection where it becomes just something different. Uh, uh, even more of a reason, in fact, to want to pick up a figure if you didn't already have a reason before. I had already a big reason to want to pick up the Cassandra Kane, being a big fan of the character growing up. Now, of course, the character is using, of course, pillaging parts from two different Batgirls. The end result is a nice looking Batgirl. Not much in the way of paint because, of course, she's only really having it in the utility belt and the outlining of the gold around her insignia. But still, it's a nice looking Cassandra. And maybe you never know. I mean, maybe the fabric cape helps to just kind of jazz up a character that maybe wouldn't have worked as interesting or looked as interesting if she had only just been kept with a plastic cape. Where do you guys feel when it comes to plastic capes versus fabric capes? Do you feel like Todd and his team should probably switch more to the idea of using fabric capes moving forward? Or because, again, like we have already so many plastic capes, do you think they should just keep the plastic capes and maybe every once in a while just kind of give a treat to the collectors out there by giving us characters like Cassandra Kane sporting a fabric cape for something different? What do you guys think? Let me know. In the meantime, though, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarland Toys that did provide this sample of the gold label collection Cassandra Kane Batgirl that we had the chance to have a look at this review. If you guys did enjoy this video, I want to throw it a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you certainly do want to stick around for more, if you haven't already done so, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and you're turning on the bell notification. Wait, what? Sorry? No, go ahead. No? No, I know. Now, a whole room's been quiet and now looking back at you. Go ahead. What was your question? Am I going to be doing more DC Multiverse review? <laughs> That's a silly question. I got a whole, in fact, stack of them over off to the side here that we will be looking at in upcoming reviews. If you need your fix, though, in the meantime, popping up at the very end of this video will as well would be a playlist of other DC Multiverse reviews and Todd McFarlane's McFarlane Toys reviews that have also done leading up to this one. And of course, there's definitely going to be a lot more coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.